Welcome to another tutorial on photovoltaics. In the last video, I have demonstrated the coding of perturb and observe maximum power point tracking using MATLAB and Simulink. However, one inter interesting aspect I would like to cover in the last video, but because of the length of that video, I did not discuss that. It is known as the drifting mechanism. In this particular video, I will discuss the mechanism of drifting which happens in a dynamically varying environmental conditions while the system operates with the perturb and observe maximum power point. So before we begin, let us have a quick recap on the modified flow chart. In this modified flow chart, I have used the voltage as a new quantity rather than the duty cycle here. This voltage provides us very useful information about the slope of the photovoltaic curve. For example, here we have uh, we have the power which is increasing such that the voltage is also increasing and therefore if the power is increasing and the voltage is increasing it provides the information to the system that the operating point is moving towards the maximum power point and such that it is on the left hand side of the maximum operating power point which is supposedly here. If we have the power increasing uh, on, on this side such that the voltage is decreasing this indicates that we are operating on the right hand side of the maximum power point. Keeping this in mind, let us see two different scenarios for, uh, for understanding the drifting mechanism. The first one is when we have a slowly varying irradiation conditions, when we have just one change in the irradiation and thereafter we will see what happens if there happens to be a rapidly changing environmental condition. So let us go for the first condition. Let us say that we were operating at this particular point which is point number one right we were operating at this particular point number one and this was the point zero from which we started our uh, our system so at point zero we perturbed the system and we moved on to point number one now after we reach the point number one because p and o is not intelligent enough so that it understand that this is now the maximum power point and i should stop oscillating here rather it moves further one step to see if the power is increasing or not and therefore what happened here is that it perturbs the system voltage such that it move it it operates somewhere here and it gives a positive increment to the system voltage now as far as this positive voltage is concerned the system should move somewhere here at point number 2 uh, and thereafter it will it can see that the power at point number 2 is now less than this power number 1 and since the voltage nu is greater than the voltage 1, so what it will do, it will decrease this reference voltage by a negative increment minus C and we operate somewhere here. But what happens, we assume that after this command of perturbation has been given that okay, move on in the same direction, what happens here is that the system gets, uh, it gets a higher level of irradiation. As a result, from this point number 1, we moved on to this new point which is point number three now the jumping of the system power from point number one to point number three actually deceives the algorithm of the perturbation observed because what happened here is that the system computes the power at this point number three it sees that the power at point three is greater than the power at point number one therefore it moves here and then it sees that the voltage which was 15 volt for point number one it is less than the voltage for point number three therefore it gives another perturbation in the same particular direction and therefore the system moves on uh, to to this particular point point number four and at this point number four suppose that now the irradiation is fixed at this 400 watt per meter square irradiation so what happens that the system now uh, after after going on to this point number four it will again it will see that now the uh, now the system has a power which is less than the power number uh, less than the point number three so it will move on here and now because the voltage has increased so it will provide us this negative c and it will come back to this point number three and after this point number three it will perturb uh, in the same direction uh, until it reaches this point number five and then to point number six and thereafter the system will keep on oscillating between point uh, six five and three and it will continue to operate here unless and until we have some other uh, environmental condition now let us say that we have a rapidly changing environmental conditions under that conditions what happens so let me erase all these all this ink from here let us remove this clutter and start again 
uh, from uh, for this uh, let us say for this 600 watt pharmaceutical irradiation so suppose that i was operating at this point number 0 at this point number 0 i provided a positive perturbation and i reached to this point number 1 here now at this point number 1 we have the power at point number 1 greater than this power at point number 0 also the voltage at point 1 is greater than the out, uh, voltage at point number 0 so we operate here and as a result we give another positive increment to the voltage so after this positive increment the radiation changes to 800 watt per meter square consequently instead of moving on to this particular point i moved on to this particular point now this particular point let us say this is point number 2 it is having a power which is greater than the point number 1 point number 2 has voltage which is greater than this point number 1 and consequently we again follow the same path and another positive increment is given to the system now suppose that after we give this positive increment to the system we move on to this point number 3 now this point number 3 is already far from the maximum operating point which is which is somewhere here so at this particular point number 3 we have another change in the irradiation now what happens that with this in mind the system will move on uh, uh, the system will actually go to this uh, somewhere somewhere here which has not only the higher power but we have this point number 4 voltage of point 4 are greater than the voltage at point 3 so now what happens that it gives you another positive increment and you move on to this point number 5 now if you see here the interesting point here is that as we have the radiation level changes rapidly we are going far from the maximum power points which are somewhere here so therefore the system requires much more iterations to come back from this point number five to this point number six which is eventually the maximum power point for the irradiation at thousand watt per meter square this particular phenomena where the photovoltaic system actually moves away from the optimal operating point is known as the drifting is known as the drifting phenomena this drifting phenomena is addressed by a lot of researchers and you can see very interesting papers where the authors have published their uh, findings in ieee transaction on industrial electronics in iit power electronics iit renewable power generation and other so many interesting journals they have addressed this interesting problem and they have solved it by adding another checks on on this particular system so that the system instead of drifting away from the uh, maximum power point it actually converges fast to the uh, maximum power point so with this thing in mind i have now uh, uh, described another important shortcoming of the perturbation observed method which you should uh, you should always uh, you know keep in mind while developing new algorithms uh, so that you can have a modified and a better approach of uh, designing the new algorithms so i hope that you like this particular video thank you very much allah hafiz